This is a special bonus episode of the Wet Fly Swing Fly Fishing Show, Fly Fishing Founders series where you hear behind-the-scenes stories from the companies who are going all-in on fly fishing. This week I have flytiresdungeon.com with Doug, the mad scientist. Welcome to the Wet Fly Swing Fly Fishing Show, where you discover tips, tricks, and tools from the leading names in fly fishing today. We'll help you on your fly fishing journey with classic stories covering steelhead fishing, fly tying, and much more. How's it going, everyone? Thanks for stopping by the Fly Fishing Show. Today's episode is sponsored by Fly Tires Dungeon, who is one of our partner companies in the Wet Fly Swing Member Society. You get exclusive discounts from Fly Tires Dungeon and over 30 other partner companies who are going all in on your journey. Go to wetflyswing.com slash members to check out the bonuses and special discounts from the Dungeon and our other partner companies. In today's episode, I talk with the mad scientist himself. We talk about how uh, Doug, who maintains a somewhat mysterious profile online, produces some of the best unique discounted fly tying materials out there. We hear about some of the best selling items, including his conga hair, um, northern lights, and where to find the best deal on hooks. Hint. It's from a shop that one of our previous guests has worked for for over 40 years. Don't miss this one as Doug shares a great tip on blending materials, which includes using cable ties. So, without further ado, here is the Mad Scientist. How's it going, Doug? Good, and yourself? Good, good. Uh, Great to have you on the show. We've been talking a little bit... uh, over the last few months about what you have going and I, I'm learning everything you know as, as we go I'm learning more and more about you I, you've got a bunch of cool stuff going over there at the the dungeon and with the the mad scientists and all that so we're going to jump in there but before we do can you talk about how you first got into fly fishing and, and fly tying and how this all came into the to the dungeon I graduated college and then I wanted to go out and and uh see Montana and the, and the Rocky Mountains because I read so much about it. Because when I, I got you know, Jack Dennis's Fly Time book, Volume 1, and it got me intrigued. So a friend of mine came out here, oh, and okay. I stayed. And, and what uh, state are you in now? I'm in Montana. Oh, yeah, you're in Montana. And uh, which, right. which, uh, what part of Montana? Well, in Missoula. I'm about 25 miles south of Missoula. Oh, nice, West nice. Park Park. Yeah, it's really nice. Yeah, yeah, I've I've definitely spent some time around that area, and uh, yeah, you got some good, uh, some pretty awesome rivers. Do you have uh, what is your? Do you have like a, a home river that's uh, you know? I, I guess you got uh, you got the Madison there, right? No, we have the, the Bitterroot, which is basically I'm in the Bitterroot Valley. Yeah. Then there's a the Clark Fork, and there's the Blackfoot, and then just east of Missoula, about 20 miles, is Rock Creek. Yeah, and Rock and those Creek. Those are, are the four main bodies of water that's right yeah and rock creek was the one that i've i've fished uh, quite a bit on that's awesome now okay so so now where take us to so you get out west and uh and where does the when does the fly tires dungeon all, all that come to be well i was i was you know involved i worked in fly shops here and there and um and you know and i wanted to begin i loved making things like making flies and some of the materials were for me, I you know didn't have a lot of money, so I was buying things very expensive. So I started make, looking at my own dubbings and things like that. And I'd done that for a number of years. I started a little business, but I'm so small at the time. I had to compete with the big guys, and it was very difficult. When the Internet came into play, you know, in the late 90s for me, Fly Tires Dungeon started in 1999 on the Internet. Oh, I wow. made a few advertisements with um, Fly Fisher and Magazine, had some classified ads you could put in and auctions, and I started there. Then I developed a website, and for my, I did it all myself. And So this is my 20th year, and after that, we just kept expanding. It, it took a while, but in the last six, seven years, we just exploded. No kidding. Yeah, and, and, and we do our own thing. I have a business plan. I... Before that, we were struggling, and I just I was by myself, and I said, okay, I have to sit and rethink this thoroughly, how I want to do a business plan and how I want to run this. Yeah. So I did, and it, about a year, year later, we started to, or basically, I started to just take off. With it. What, what was the difference? What was the, how, what, how did the business plan, uh, what was in Focus it? Focus on, on price, product lines, and, um, and, and, and see if I can unique, and basically unique things. Right. Something that. But he really carries, or I don't carry uh, 
something from a big company, put it in my hand, move it to the left hand and resell it. A thousand shops have that. Right. I want to do my own unique thing and I want to keep the prices very low. That's the key. Keep the prices extremely low, wholesale or even below at, for, at my retail price. Uh huh. I awesome. have a lot of people who said, um, you know, I just can't afford to take $20 going to a shop and buy a thing of tinsel, a bag of hooks, and maybe a spool of thread, and that's it. Yeah. And especially kids who want to get into it. Right. And I said, okay, I, I can do this, but I have to watch what I sell and how I do it. Yep. That's cool. So, so somebody hasn't been to your, your website and they go in there, what, um, can you describe some of the products you have or maybe your best selling products and what, what it, what it looks like when you go in there, what you offer? Well, the, the, our best seller is a Congo hair and that, that's a, it's in the synthetic hair that people use on doing a lot of bait fish flies from salt water to even freshwater patterns. It matches another product out there and that's the biggest seller. But we are getting a lot more interest in our dubbing, especially the streamer dubbings like the Kraken or the leech dubbings, just because they're long fiber. We can do leech patterns as well as various bait fish patterns. And that's becoming very popular as well as our, our, our tinsels, like uh-huh. our crystal air and our crystal web and northern lights. You know, things, uh, and our, we have a tremendous amount of leg sizes and colors, and those are picking up. But basically, it used to be just a Congo, and now everything is starting. You're right. Okay. So you just have a bunch of different, and do you cover, you know, if you wanted to get into, do you have, so it's mostly synthetics? Do you have natural, any natural mixes? I have or? a few natural items, and those basically are just, occasionally, like, I, I get elk hair, deer hair, moose hair, and I offer that on occasion. But that's basically it. Everything else is pretty much synthetics. And the reason is I used to sell marabou's and it getting so high price, you can't get it anymore at a decent price. Plus, you got to clean it and wash it. And yeah. You, have, you get bugs involved. I <laughs> threw away probably 25 pounds of oh, wow. saddle hackle one time because of the bugs you got in. Yeah. I, enough's enough. And, and this, the odor actually is not fun. Are these bugs, you mean like uh, moths or other bugs? You get moths and you get uh, fur beetles. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yep. So, Once they get in, you're done. Well, well, the cool thing, and uh, I recently had uh, somebody on, we were talking a little about the fly tying materials. Uh, and, um, you know, I was at, asking him about selecting materials. You know, how do you select materials online? He said, well, online, it's the synthetics are easy. Just go buy some, but the, the naturals are the, stri- the the tough thing. So for you, it seems like you got a pretty good niche here. You got mostly synthetics. So that's an easy one for people to buy online. Do you, what are, what's the biggest question? I mean, do you get questions from people about your stuff? Well, a lot of the questions on the, can you get this? Oh, can yeah. you make this? Um, and a, a number of my products, I have actually made from customers' um, interest. Uh-huh. You know, my leech dubbing guy sent me a sample, says, can you make this dubbing? And I, I probably got it with about 95%, cr- you know, what the dubbing was, a sample I received. And then I started a whole line of colors. And, and so a lot of my, is, is, can you make this? Are you going to stock this? Can you get this type of yarn that this other company sells? I said, let me see for what I can do. Yep. And I try as best I can. Some things are very difficult to find, or I have to buy massive quantities. Yeah. Wow. And then, so, so, but I'm I'm lo- always looking for more, and I always ask people if you have something you want interested in, just let me know, and I'll see if what I can do. And I custom make dubbing for people too. Yeah. But can you talk a little bit about how that process works? You know, maybe without giving any you know away any of your secrets, but you know, somebody comes in and they have this thing, you know, this this product they really love, they want to get something similar. You know, how do you um you know, how do you source it or create it? Is this something where you're going to a certain uh manufacturer or do you have multiple or, or how does that all work? How does oh, that process work? There, there's I have many, many different manufacturers. Some may have just one product. Yeah, raw product that I'm interested in. Yep. Then I'll use that raw product for maybe half a dozen different things. Gotcha. Another company just makes one thing for me. Yeah. Okay. They'll make like like my fish shanks. I don't make them. I you know I don't have the facility or the money to buy the machine. So they make what I want, and I design. It takes a few months to get this thing straight, but a lot of it is I get the raw product, and the raw product can be used for various things. Gotcha. So like some of my dubbings, I may use um, the sparkle 
raw product for maybe half a dozen dubbing. I see. On there. Okay. And, and that's what I, you know, I, I do all the dyeing, yeah. drying, and blending huh. you know, myself. So, and it takes time to do that. Yeah. How'd you learn uh, all the, the dr- dr- dubbing or uh, all the blending and dyeing? Is that something that's pretty easy to pick up or did you, have you been? To a point, it took me years, but uh, it's all the school of hard knock. Yeah. No, nobody showed me anything. You taught yourself. Yeah, I taught myself and I find certain things. They ask a lot of questions you know, to these companies and they, they, they're very helpful because these people who like a lot of dying are die experts. And so, and I do a lot of experiment. So I have a lot of, um, you know, let's say mistakes that I sell out as mistakes. Oh yeah. Gotcha. That's cool. So yeah, it sounds like you got diverse, uh, t- you know, materials. What, what, uh, do you think, mo- is it streamers? Is that what you're saying? Or what, what sort of flies or people, is it just a, a mix of everything that are people are? Mix of everything. Yeah. From all dry flies to uh, offshore patterns. Yeah. Uh, I have dubbings that, you know, they'll tie down to 26s. Yeah. And then I have big, giant, you know, synthetic hairs that will tie, you know, sailfish flies. Sure. So, so it's, it's, it's what people ask me. Can you do, can you make this color for peacock bath? That's cool. Or can you make, um, a new and tarpon patterns. Can you get this? You know, the big yep. thing now is, um, People wanted they're doing something called dragon tails. Well, I have something similar called gator tails. People have been asking me for something like that for years. Huh. It took months to figure this out and get the right product in, and I finally did. And they're using it for you know tarpon as well as bass and pike. So yep, that's sweet. You know, so it's it just people ask me or email me and say, "Can you do this? Do you have this?" And then I, I do the, what I want, what they want huh. because they know more than I do. What <laughs> exactly. That's what I mean. That's exactly, you're on the right track. You know, you're, you're asking your customers what they want. They're telling you, I mean, it's basically the same thing that I'm doing with the show. I mean, a lot of my episodes, you know, some of them have come from people reaching out and actually this one here, you know, you, my connection with you, uh, I think we connected at the show there, but before that, uh, you know, I had some listeners that, you know, recommended reaching out to you and, and now, you know, you're part of this, uh, you know, our members society, this group we have going. So, you know, it's pretty, it's a pretty cool thing. I think that's the bottom line for maybe the tip for anybody. If you want to, you know, the best way is to serve your audience, just ask them what they need. That's cool. Well, when I do my videos, I, I don't, I'm oh, not yeah, interested. you do videos too. You have a, you have a YouTube channel. Yeah, they're very basic. I do it all by myself. You know, nobody helps me. Yeah. And but the, the idea behind the video is not to them to tie that maybe pattern exactly how I tie it. The idea is to say, these are my materials I'm using on this pattern. I want you to think what you can, this pattern gives you an idea what you can do with it yep. for those materials. So I have a leech pattern and say, well, that one may work for a bait fish if I do this or a crayfish pattern. So the idea behind the videos is not the exact pattern so to speak but the to the usage of these materials some people ask me well what's this for well the video show what it can be used. yeah i hope it just clicks that they start thinking in their own realm of, of patterns they want to tie this can be used in place of this yeah material and that's, that's right. the whole idea I, I don't need to have my pattern tied exactly just no i'm giving you an idea maybe to spark to say okay this i oh that's right i can use this for this Yep. as well as this, this, this. That's the whole idea. That's right. No, that makes sense. That makes sense. Okay. So, so yeah, I mean, you have, you know, obviously you got some good stuff going here. What is, you know, if you look at, I mean, some of these other companies out there, I mean, there's a lot of, I mean, we've got some over here uh, that, you know, the hairlines and some of these bigger companies. Have you seen, I mean, what, what has been your, your connection with kind of more of the fly fishing, um, you know, industry sort of thing. I mean, are, are you kind of off on your a little island doing your own thing, or are you making connections with some of those, some of the bigger um, companies? I, I used years ago on a different. I had this, you know, I was selling materials. I, you know, before the internet came, I was dealing. I dealt with Hairline, I dealt with Spirit River, and I dealt with Umco and even Orvis. Um, you know, the original owner Bob Borden. I really. Enjoyed talk, dealing with Bob. And oh, the original thing. owner. Now, who was that? Which company? A Paraline. Oh yeah. Bob Bull. You know, he started. I remember when he started. It was just he had all he had was his rabbit dubbing. Did that start? In, was that that started in Oregon? Right. That was that's always been. That started in Oregon. Yep. Yeah. And then, and then Bill Black was involved with um, Umqua, and, and he split off and started Spirit River. Oh, cool. On there, and then the Hairline sold out a few years ago. I believe. And then the Hairline absorbed Spirit River a few oh. years ago. Yep. On that, and I don't 
I don't deal with any of these companies anymore. Um, I go directly to the people. And I do have dealerships, and I offer dealerships for people. And uh, if they want to sell my product within their stores, and I have two types of dealer programs for people. Even anybody can be a dealer in my in my world. If you there's a minimum, and if you order it, if you're individual, you get the dealer discount. So I think there's a lot of commercial tires, and I think a lot of these companies may not sell the deal to commercial tires. You know, unless you yeah. have some sort of ID, this, or, no, I don't need that. Right. You buy the materials, it's yours. You do what you want. Yep. Gotcha. And, and if you have, have a big enough amount, you get, you get it, I'll get you a discount if you want to become, call yourself a dealer. I don't care. Oh, sure, sure. I make it be, you know, this is supposed to be fun and not super tough to be a, I can't buy it from some companies because I don't have a brick and mortar store. Oh, right. Yeah. You're all online. They won't, so, they won't sell them. They won't sell to me. So, and, and I know some of these people for years and years, but that's their policy. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, the, I have a brick and mortar. I don't right? want to. I want to open up to everybody. Right. So how do you? So you must have. I mean, what what does your operation look like? You just got a pile of uh, your materials down at, at at your house, sort of thing, in the basement, or is yeah, that... I, my, I my production facility is in my basement. I take the whole basement up. Yeah. And I have a dye shed which I do all my dyeing, and then we I have a carport which we actually um, framed in and built about three years ago. And that's where my inventory is on these on these racks. Oh yeah, I mean, so technically, you do kind of have a shop. I mean, I, I well, I in a sense I do, but it's not a walk-in retail. Once in a while, somebody says, "Can I?" If they're in the neighborhood, in. can I? And I said, "Yeah, you can stop." Oh, you so, can walk in the. So you do. The so, the, yeah, the production facility is off limits. No, that's awesome. So you do. I mean, it was funny. I uh, uh, recently interviewed Mike Mercer, who works for the Reading Fly Shop, and we were. We were talking more about um, just fishing on the uh, Sacramento, the lower Sacramento River. But it was so funny because uh, he talked about how he started his shop, his first shop, when he was literally a, a teenager in his parents' house. And and it was downstairs. And and customers would come in. They would come in through his bedroom. To, to, he built rods and stuff like that. So it was just this cool, you know, that was 50 or whatever it was, 40 years ago, a long time ago. This is obviously not the same. But, you know, I mean, it, it is kind of a cool day and age we live in with this this online thing that, you know, anybody, it's kind of like anybody can just start a business, right? You can. You can start out of your, out of your bedroom. Yeah. I started, um, you know, when I got into it, Let's say with the Fly Tires Dungeon, I had a, maybe an eight by ten little corner, and I had everything stuffed in there. Yep. And you know, and now I have to take the whole basement up, and my I got about five hundred square foot for my little warehouse, and we're running out of room huh. uh, because we're, we're adding new products, new colors yeah. all the time. Are Somebody gonna- that comes, in, uh, I have a person that does all the pulling the orders and ships them. She says you're running out of room. You better think of something. Huh. So you actually have staff. You actually have people that, that are on staff. or you know, I have one person that comes in and just does pulls all the orders and ships them and handles all that. I don't do that. I'm doing it this week because she's out, off yeah. this week. And another guy just makes one of my products for gotcha. me. Gotcha. So you, you know, he's part-time doing that. and um, Yeah. So, but I just have to, I'm just in the production facility and that, even that I have a hard time keeping up. Yeah. So you're, I mean, yeah, 20 years and I mean, do you have any, what does it look like in the next five to 10 years? I mean, are you going to be, you know, moving this thing into a, uh, you know, a, a warehouse sort of thing trying to, you know, I know we mentioned off air talking about the long term potentially, you know, selling it and the mad scientists, you know, kind of, uh, you know, name and you got kind of a kind of fun thing going there. I mean, what do you have a plan for the next uh, five to 10 years? Well, we're, I'm looking at putting another building in here. Yeah. The, the problem with going, go renting something or buy, and then you got a, a huge expense. Yeah. Not just, um, you got the building, you got power, you got all that, you got to pay. And so you got a choice either. You got to make a lot more money just right. to break again yep. or do what I'm doing and just grow the way it's going to grow and then you, um, and build something when I need to do it. Gotcha. That's what we're talking about now. Yeah. I you know, you. to do that. And, and if I have to, I will, I, you know, I built a little die shed, you know, a couple of years ago and I'm going to you know, maybe put another, let's say a cold storage shed for raw product. And that will eliminate, that will free up a lot of um, space for me at this point. Gotcha. And uh, you know, try to keep things, you know, not real big, huge, you know, uh, our, our materials and we try to keep them lightweight and we keep them fairly oh, small. Yeah. That's right. And if, if, if I don't want to get into beads or hooks, right. I'm trying to brush them, plus the weight. Yeah. 
That's shipping cool. costs can be if a guy sells a vice, you got a tremendous amount of cost. Oh yeah, just in shipping that vice. So I'm not getting in any of that. No. So you basically your your focus is, I mean, like you said, dubbings. I mean, it's obviously synthetics. It's dubbings. It's uh, it's s- synthetic hair. Anything synthetic. Anything that's kind of light. So if somebody, you know, just to give people an idea of what they can get and you know, compared to, you know, other, like we said, the other companies that have that stuff too, but you know, you're going to offer things at a, a, a better discount, but that's basically it. That's your, your bulk of your stuff. Yeah. It's a massive synthetics and, and lightweight. We have fish shank, but they're small. They're not, we're not talking uh bead head lead, you know, or tungsten beads. Yeah. You know, you can add a lot of weight and I don't do that. Yeah. Um, I, I, because there's shipping costs. You can buy something at a store for $10 at some online and next thing you know it's ten dollars shipping is on top of that yeah exactly i don't i want to keep shipping as low as possible yeah for everybody and sometimes i lose money on shipping especially overseas um I mean, oh, yeah. you, may not, you know if i they could buy 50 bucks worth of stuff because my price is so low so you ship it, overseas you it, ship all around the world i have i have shipped into 42 countries no kidding so and i have dealers in about 15 and so you must have uh Oh, okay. So, so you, yeah, you have a uh, set up thing through FedEx or whatever. Some but... it's all postal service because that's the cheapest. No kidding. Yep. Uh, FedEx is very expensive, and so is UPS. So I go postal service, and usually within the United States, we usually get the orders in, and usually the same day. If not, it's the next morning, and within two days, maybe three tops, you get your product. So we're we're we very quickly gotcha. shipping. Okay. And if I have to, some things I have to dye that day, I'll dye them as quickly as I can and I'll dry them and we'll still ship out the same. Huh. So what if I, you know, for example, I was in the market for tying, you know, I was going to tie some steelhead flies. I wanted to make something kind of unique, you know, maybe something, uh, a color that, well, I noticed you did have some, uh, what are they? The UVX fly tying materials is, I right. mean, if somebody was going to do some steelhead flies, is there stuff you would recommend for maybe some materials to, to try? I guess you got dubbing and stuff like that. Anything else that, you know, that might uh, right. make well, sense? Well, yeah, the dubbings. Yeah. You know, always my streamer dubbings, and there's tinsel, like the Northern Lights, mm-hmm. and then I, my Crystal Web, and, you know, and I have some Pearl Web. These are all tinsels that do very well. The Congo hair. Um, What's the, the Congo hair? Is the Congo hair kind of like a, a – um, I'm, I'm picturing the – yeah, it's so like a, a it's thick. A poly, it's polypropylene. Oh, polypropylene. Okay. Yeah, and so it sheds water real well. Gotcha. It, it's similar to EP fibers. Oh, okay. And that's what people are using in place of. Gotcha. Yeah, that's why I sell thousands. Oh, that. it's a, all right. Yeah, because EP fibers, that's going to cost a, a decent amount more. Well, ours are up like a buck ninety-five. My whole point is, you can go to a shop and see dubbing for three bucks. We want to sell it for ninety-five cents. No kidding. Retail. So what has been your, it sounds like you don't really, like I said, or we talked before, the connection with some of the bigger companies. I mean, have you seen any, felt any uh, blowback, got any feedback or anything like that over over the years from some of the bigger I- industry leaders and stuff like that? I haven't heard anything yeah. and I really don't, I don't look for it. Yeah. You're, um, you're just you a small, know, you're a small little guy just doing your thing. And I don't care because the, the thing about it is that they're not going to, but if, if somebody wanted to be real and attack me and you know and do that uh they can't like and the for reason example, they can't i yeah. buy the stuff a lot of places where they buy it oh, or i really? have other sources so they, and if if they want to say i have been stopped buying from two places these companies have stopped me from two places yeah and, you know and and there was always a silver lining because when they stopped me i'll find it and i found it again uh the sources and the source was about um 80 times cheaper 80, you know, it was 80% cheap. Yeah. So that was a silver lining. And the same thing with other things. They, I've been stopped um, because they want exclusive in the United States. And that's fine. Yeah. I just find other source. It's there to to do and I will do it. And and I don't get any. I don't really care. They can yeah. say whatever they want. And are these, <laughs> and are these sor- sources mostly overseas or are there sources in the U.S.? Or where, where are your no, sor- they're, they're, they're overseas. They're in the U.S. They're in Europe. They're in Asia. They're in, you know, I have places even. All over the yeah, world. They're everywhere. Yep. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I try to keep everything in the U S if I can, but some, a lot of places don't have it. Yeah. Um, but you know, I, and I, and I've been in the industry for, oh, probably doing this for over 35 years. So I know, I know a lot of people mm-hmm. and some of these companies that, you know, um, that I've dealt with over the years, we become real close friends and 
if somebody wanted to squish me out, they won't, they wouldn't because these guys and I have become friends. Sure. The company. Yeah. So I, you know, and I, I don't worry about it. If something happens, it happens. I did. I just go on my merry way and find something else. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, no, it's not no. worth it. It's not worth the hassle because no. I, I don't have time. Let's take a quick break for a word from our sponsor, the Wet Fly Swing Member Society and Fly Tires Dungeon. If you've been enjoying the podcast episodes and want to support local businesses and get some bonus content, then you need to check out the Member Society for about the price of a pint of beer. You get inside access and exclusive discounts to over 30 of our partner companies. Uh, FlyTiresDungeon.com uh, is one of those great companies who is going all in on a, an innovative idea, providing you with exclusive discounts. I originally reached out to many of our listeners of the podcast and asked them who their favorite uh, small to mid-sized companies were. I then reached back out to those companies, and that's how the group was made. You can connect with our little community support local businesses, join the movement at one convenient spot. Go to wetflyswing.com slash members to check out all the details. That's wetflyswing.com slash M-E-M-B-E-R-S to support the movement and your journey. Okay, back to the show. So the, and I guess that, that UV, is that UVX, is that a, can you, talk about that a little bit is that is that a, a, high, a big selling product for you or is that just uv your typical uv yeah it's a high it's you know my uvx stuff is very is high sell you know it's high very popular yeah a lot of people are uv you know some of it's very high uv some is very subtle um you know and people wanted uv products so i that's why i brought it out yeah you know and yeah. that's the reason my my dubbings as well as you know some um uh, synthetic hair as and tinsels, they all have UV. Yeah. And you can UV up almost anything, really. Right. Oh, you can? Yeah, pretty much. You yeah. can, it, the darker the material, the less UV it has. It's oh, just, okay. It's, it's black is, is virtually nothing. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. That's just the way it is. And then there's theories on UV. High UV, no. You want low UV, so. Yeah. Does, I U, don't does UV even work is another. Yeah, well, some people swear by it. Other people say no. And yeah. there's articles written. I don't. I do what people want. Yep. If they want UV, I've got it. If you don't want UV, I've got that too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you... And I will make UV yeah. special for some. If oh, really? If a certain thing I can do it, enhance it UV, I will do that. Gotcha. Just give me an extra day to do it and I will do it. Nice. And you're... Uh, and the tying, so you, you've been tying a while. Do you have... I mean, I occasionally ask this question. It's not always an easy one, but on fly tying um, you know, tips, do you have any... Any tips on, um, you know, tying that come to mind or even selecting materials or anything like that that might help somebody that's, you know, maybe kind of new, a little bit new to fly tying? Well, I, I think just look at some videos online is, is a good way yeah. to start or get a class. Yeah. The, the, the thing I want to tell people is just open up, open your mind up, just look, look at something and say, okay, here's a standard, let's say, woolly bugger. Yep. Look at that and say, what else can I use to make this? A woolly bugger. Right. What what could you use? If you had well, a woolly bugger. Materials. Don't say if a, if a recipe has, you have to use marabou, find something else. Yeah. So what, you know, what think of what else could be used on that fly. That is, that's a great point. Well, I, I just don't, because that's why my synthetics, I don't, I haven't used marabou in years. So what do you use in place of marabou? I use like Northern Lights. So what is, so Northern Lights is, can you, because marabou is, the great thing about marabou, it's so you know, so much movement, so light. I mean, it, it, I guess when it gets wet, it gets really streamlined. But how is the, can you, the, is it, can you explain your material, your synthetic and how it might it be? It doesn't have the pulsating effect as Marabou has. Yeah. But it has, has a um, sheen and, um, spar- and sparkle to it. It's, Northern Lights is a tinsel. Let's say I have a black yellow. It's black tinsel and there's microfilaments wrapped around it. There's two of them. If you dye it, the microfilaments, which are white, take on the dye color. So a black, yellow Northern Lights has black tinsel with yellow microfilaments. A black chartreuse, and you can see it. And when you put it in the water, I use it for tails on woolly bugs. Yeah, it doesn't pulsate as much, but I believe in 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 sheen and sparkle. Maybe not a lot, but sometimes I use a lot, and I think that gets fish's attention, especially if you, if it flips in the water like a bait fish dying or injured. Yep. That's what I, you know, and I've done very well with that. Yep. With those type patterns, I, people use marabou. That's fine. I've used it for years, but I, I'm, 
I'm going off in the world of using synthetic. Yeah. And I'm trying to look at a pattern like a Clouser minnow. Well, they use bucktail. Well, mm-hmm. bucktails get very expensive to a point, but sure. I'm using crystal web for it or uh-huh. northern light in place of. It does the thing, but it has more sheen. It has a color. It has yeah. probably more movement than a bucktail. Gotcha. And, and on that... Uh... On that, say back to that woolly bugger. So you could use that uh, Northern Lights for the tail. So body, obviously, you got the dubbing, plenty of dubbing you could use. What would you use to um, simulate a hackle? Well, you could use I can call it MS bugger dubbing. What it is is it's about a quarter inch um, length dubbing fiber, and in there is about an inch to an inch and a quarter legs. So I blend it in. Oh yeah. So then you take it, you can dub it on and wrap it up, and then you take a brush and brush out the legs, which yep. imitates the hackle, and the dubbing imitates the chenille. Oh, there you go. There you go. So it's kind of yeah. like a, a, one of my favorite uh, leech or stream, you know, patterns is the, um, you know, like the mohair leech, right? The mohair. Is 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 mohair, do you, do you know much about that? Yeah, I used to sell mohair in about 20 colors. Is mohair, is that, a, is that all, that's all synthetic? Uh, no, I don't think. Mo- I think mohair is it has some hair itself is natural, and I'm not sure exactly yeah. if it's from a or goat. I'm not sure. Sure. Um, in place, uh, I used to use mohair, and people use mohair leeches. I my leech dubbing is to offset or, or in place of the mohair, and that's what I developed the leech dubbing because a guy wanted it for le- making leeches. I said, look, it, I can match mohair like the Canadian browns very popular. So I have one that matches the Canadian brown I pull clothes, and I use that on a lot of my leeches mm-hmm. in place of mohair. And I have people who, who live around here who are fly tires and some guides. They want that certain type of dubbing for making their leeches for lake fish, and they come in and get some of my dubbing for that mm. in go. place of mohair. Yep. You know, it's, it, I just like a little bit of sparkle more so, and that's why my dubbings have little sparkle in a lot of them that's cool that's cool so is this uh you know as a fly tires dungeon is this a i mean is this like a full-time uh gig for you yeah i i get up at about quarter to six i start work at six and i may quit at six to seven no kidding you work 12 hour plus days i work that and sometimes on occasional weekends it, no kidding and you you must just uh you know what do you um what do you love most about about doing what you do i like making new products yeah, I like inventing things, seeing things, and and say, okay, what if I took this, this, and this, or I make a mistake on something, say that looks good. So, so a lot of my products come from mistakes, or or uh, I just look at, look, walk around, and, and I get samples from various companies, say this is good, this is not good, this and this combined could be good. I like the experimentation. Mm-hmm. I like that's my my I enjoy that more than anything. Yeah. And you're just I love, there. I just love what I do. Yeah. I just love what I do. I wake up every morning, can't wait to get down and start doing things. And you're tying flies and mi- mixing stuff and just thinking and brainstorming and all that. Yeah, I you know I, I tie a lot of flies for myself and using some materials and see how they would work on patterns and go test them out. Yeah. Um, and that works really well. In fact, I'm I'm going out next week to test some some new dubbings, you know, for a poppers and things like that. Oh yeah. See if it work out. Yep. How do you, when you get your stuff, you get this new material, how do you, how do you test it or make sure that it's going to be effective or do, do you do any of that or do you just make something and ship it out there? You know, how do you, how no, do you know? I make something and I, and I play with it and I test it in the water, see what happens. And I go, maybe go fishing with it. Um, or if I, sometimes I don't, I, I say, Oh, I know it's going to work. Does this material has worked or on this for this product. Mm-hmm. If I add this to this, I know it's going to do this. Some things you just know it's going to function. Other things you just uh, you're just guessing. Yeah. And I have fools of things here at times that didn't work out. You know, but some of these companies you you ask for samples and they send you ten pounds of product for a sample. I said oh, okay, you know, hmm. and that that will last you for years really. But I have a lot of that that just sits around in corners that has not really something. Nothing has sparked my I, an idea yet. For that. Yeah. What what's your uh, do you have a couple of top patterns that um, you know? I'm not sure. Let's see, you're in Montana, so you're fishing for mostly browns and rainbows. Well, I fish for bass too. Oh, bass, yeah, yeah. That's where I'm going next week for bass. I'm, I'm using, you know, um, and I'm, I like to fish for for largemouth and smallmouth if oh, I wow. can. But uh, I, 
I like fishing for, um, you know, down the rivers here for, you know, rainbows and brown trout and the cutthroats. Uh huh. And I, I like streamer fishing. And I'm going to try, um, what I'm going to call trout poppers for fishing for trout with like a, a, a little, somewhat like a bass popper, but for trout and see what happens. Yeah. Do you, do you have any names of flies that you, a couple of flies you really love to use? Yeah, I like, um, there's, I think it's, um, oh gosh, a, like a, like a conehead minnow. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a BK leech I like to use. BK, uh, BK as in Brian. Uh, yeah. I have some of my videos. I don't, but I have some, like an uncle Willie fly, oh, cool. which is a big giant dry fly, you know, for about everything. Uh-huh. But a lot of them are streamers. I, you know, a thunder demon I'd use yeah. for trout. Um, these cone head type streamers with a lot of copper color with Northern lights and my, um, PK dubbings or, uh, um, NK dubbings work very well for trout fishing mm-hmm. and for, for, um, smallmouth fishing. So by, I like a lot of streamers for okay. that purpose. You cool. Know. I'll, uh, I'll put a link out in the show notes to your, uh, some of these things we're talking about here and anything else we, we, uh, we cover, uh, so, okay, good. And, and when you get into tying, yeah, you just, you're just kind of sitting down there experimenting. I mean, I guess that's the, the mad scientist, right? How did that, how did the uh, mad scientist and fly tires dungeon name? Well, I was in the, in the basement, which is like a little dungeon. Um, and a friend of mine came over one time and he's, you know, I'm here, I'm dying stuff and I have blenders going and he goes, you're like a little mad scientist in a dungeon, you know, like <laughs> a Gene Wilder takeoff. I see. Yeah. I just used that and, and just ran with it. Yeah. There you you know, and, and my favorite, my favorite holiday is Halloween. Oh, is it really? So, yeah, I just enjoy it, you know, and, and that's where, and I like that. And I said, this is, this can, this can be fun. I'm trying yeah. to make it as, as fun as possible and not as serious. Well, it's not it, supposed to be serious. No, it's not. No, I think that's what you're right on. Why is Halloween your favorite holiday? Uh, I just, oh, I was a kid. I always liked oh, yeah. the, the Frankenstein and Wolfman and the Dracula when I was growing gotcha. up and the ghosts and we did all that when we were kids and, yep. and uh, you know, my daughter's the same way. You know, so yeah, totally. It's, yeah, it's, w- it's just, and I said, I'll just run with it. There you and go. There you go. Yeah. The wolf man and all that. That's <laughs> a classic. Uh, so yeah, good. Well, I think, um, you know, I think I have a good feel for, you know, and hopefully folks that are listening, have a good feel for what you do. Anything else you want to share that, you know, tells a little more about, you know, the, what you do out there or how you're unique. I mean, that we haven't covered today or anything that people can, you know, get a hold of at your, you know, at your shop. Well, they can just call me anytime they want to. You know, I just, and if you're going to call, you're going to get me. Yeah. There's no, um, but, you know, cause I, this is my personal phone as well as a business phone. And yep. I say, if you have any questions, call me or email me and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And uh, so just enjoy it. You know? Yeah. There's no sense to be serious about it. And I go out times and I'll fish and I'll lie on the bank and I'll take a nap for an hour. Mm-hmm. You no, know? and I get up and okay, I might catch a few fish or I may <laughs> not catch any. And it's just a way of getting out and enjoying it. And ninety percent, I think maybe seventy five percent of the time I'm I'm fishing, I'm testing. Yeah, and I would you know just enjoy it. Yeah. Um, uh, and and I may try to make things easy for people. If I can help you, I will help you. Um, mm-hmm. It's not that difficult. Uh, to deal with me and if you have any questions or, or he, don't hesitate to ask some people are hesitant they might offend me i said well i had kids huh. you know you know they can they can really offend you yeah so. how, how, old, how old are your I kids kids in soccer before they can offend you so that's right i how, said you're not gonna offend me i'm too old to care <laughs> how old are your kids uh i have one 30 she's 38 oh wow 30, and 25 i'm i'm 63 no kidding that's yeah. awesome yeah so they've been uh, so let's see were they around uh as kids when you uh were had the shop or you know had your the fly tires dungeon oh yeah they've been around and my son's a, a very avid fly fisherman oh yes yep yeah and they're actually they're heading on the beaver head this weekend oh cool is you there know, is uh, there an interest tell- yeah it's <laughs> So he's going with it, yeah. So my, my daughter's getting into it too, and uh, my uh-huh. other daughter's starting to get into it. And, That's and cool. So I, it just, you know, I just try to make it fun. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's it, you've got to take things light. Exactly. Are there any, uh, you know, we talked about some other companies, but are there any other resources out there that for fly tying or materials that maybe isn't your own stuff that you've connected with or would recommend for anybody? 
Well, I tell people, you know, they ask me for hooks and things, and there's some yeah, people yeah. like that to have some hooks. And I think like the fly shop in California, the Redding, um, Redding I think they have uh, uh, their own line of hooks, which is a lot of the hooks come from about two sources. That's it. Oh, really? So buy from the same sources, yeah. You know, like Korea and then the Japan and even China now has a lot of hooks. Oh, yeah. So I can go in there and drive, buy from the same sources as some of these big companies, but I'm not interested in hooks. But the fly shop has good prices at hooks, I think. I think I tell people go there. There's a guy who's a fly manufacturer in Billings called Yellowstone Fly Goods, and he will sell you hooks and beads at wholesale prices that if you buy 75 bucks a month. Oh, he's no a kidding. good friend of mine, and I sell him materials for his fly. You know, That's we do perfect. actually do a lot of trading. I need hooks. He sends me hooks. I send the material. There you go. For my own use. So, I, you know, it's places like that. And I saw a few other places. And I, you know, if I like something that I don't sell, I will send that person to that place. They look at, I've used their stuff. They're good. Yep. Like beads and hooks or, you know, things like that. Um, mm-hmm. I, I, it, cause I don't sell, I don't really care. Even if I do sell some stuff, I say, well, these guys may have a better selection of maybe certain things. Yeah. To look. So, so what about your, um, what about beads and stuff? Where would you send somebody, somebody for beads? And well, I, I think the, I, I get mine from Yellowstone Fly Goods out of Billings. Yeah, and and he's a, a wholesaler and he's a fly manufacturer. His name is Mike, and his stuff is is superb. I've used his hooks for years and years, and his beads as well. And I trade for him, but I I made a deal with him before I went to Oregon in the show. If people call for seventy five, order seventy five dollars worth, he'll sell you wholesale. Oh really? Wow. He sells he sells the guides and outfitters wholesale. Yeah, I think now, and um, he's a good guy to deal with, and his, they're excellent. They're just superb. Cool, cool. They come, they come from Korea, so okay. and they're ex- they're top top notch. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Good stuff. All right, Doug. Well, I got a, just a you, you got a couple more minutes just for a quick little rapid fire round. Sure. Okay, uh, this is just some some random quick uh, questions as we uh, wrap this up. So, so what do you think if you had to, if somebody asked you what your uh, what your superpower is? What what would you say? My soup. Uh, well, I I think innovative. Uh-huh. Uh huh. You know, because I you know Doug Swisher and I are close friends. Who's and he always Doug can Swisher? You do this? Yeah. Um. You know, we, he, he always. You know, we always talk to each other about innovation, and, and, and he was the most innovative person, I think, in the fly fishing world with the selective trout coming out. And we always deal with materials, and he's always coming to me for, you know, new material, like giving them new stuff to test. And yeah. I think just innovative. Um, okay. I think over the years, you just get more creative, and you and you loosen up a little bit and don't have to stick to a strict pattern. So yep. I've been doing that for years. Okay. So. And, Doug, and Doug Swisher, who now I, I know that name. Is he, um, was he kind of one of your mentors? Uh, yeah. And, and the, when I first came out here, my dad is my main one by far. Um, and, but Doug is, and I've been together, you know, close friends for 30 years or so. And yeah. He's written some, some books and stuff, right? Numerous books, numerous videos yeah. and all over the world fishing. And, um, he's in the hall of fame now. Oh yeah. And, yeah. It, it, but you know, I, I look at his advice on things, and and he's the one that really got us started the legs in the dubbing. He's the guy. Oh no, kidding! He, he one tape said you put this with this, so we did it in a blender. And next thing you know, legs in dubbing, and then we just exploded that. There you go. Years. What type of a uh, what type of a blender do you use? Well, I have modified blenders, but I don't use a. Um, if you anybody wants to just blend up their own, I would recommend is just getting a normal blender, like an Oster blender. They're like twenty bucks. A uh, Oster, okay. and then use that, and um, you can take a normal blender blades and tie some like little cable ties on them. What they do is that they it helps blend it better. I seem you blend a little bit more. Oh, I think you, in you, a regular. You put, oh, you put you put cable ties yeah. on the actual blade. Yeah, on the blades. Oh uh, yeah, that will help blend it. I think a little bit better. Sure. So you, just... you know, because a lot of times the blender just pushes it up or it doesn't have a lot of power. But I would, I would, those mini blenders are okay. But yeah. you can, I burned them one out. I burned one out in two hours. Yeah. So I would get a regular blender if okay. you're going to blend your own dubbing. Like take some of my dubbings and mix them all together. Yep. Use your own blender. Use a regular blender. Okay. You'll save money. <laughs> definitely, definitely. What uh, what type of vice do you do you like to use? Type of vice? Yeah. Do you, you're, you're oh, um, I use one from Bernie Griffin. He gave me a prototype. Oh gosh, twenty five years or oh, so. Oh, like going. the 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 same company that does the tools and stuff, right? Yeah, and yeah. Bernie's a good guy, and he's um, you know, I used to go to shows with him a lot and help him, and 
and I got one of his vices. <laughs> it's been 25, almost 30 years, and it's still going strong. Yeah. That's you it. know, I think Regals are nice vices of people. Yeah. Some of those knockoff Regals are good, but the problem is some of the the, the, the jaws aren't as strong overall. Yeah. It doesn't matter what you like. Gotcha, gotcha. What's your uh, what's your favorite beverage when you get off the river? I, I you know, I don't, um, I don't drink, I don't smoke, I mm-hmm. don't do any. I, I drink um, a lot of um, teas. Uh huh. Like is a Snapple half and half. I, oh yeah, Snapple. That's right. Snapple's still around, huh? Yeah, I drink a lot. I drink yep. a lot of that. That's right. And then my my two vices are potato chips and red licorice. Oh, red liquor, not black though. Well, I like black too, but red's my preferable. <laughs> okay, yeah, there you go, there you go. That's awesome. Nice. All right, that's, that's, what, I, that's what I get for my birthday is red licorice and potato chip. Oh, cool, cool. Yeah, I was going to ask you some of your vices. That's good. And what um, did you do? Any sports or anything uh, throughout your life? Uh, yeah, I played soccer in high school. I played um, basketball in high school, and I played uh, at a two-year school. I played basketball at a two-year school. Oh no, kidding! What what position? Basketball. Oh, uh, actually, I was going to be guard, but I played center. Center, yeah, I was six. Um, I was five ten at the time, but wow. I had a, a vertical leap of fifty inches. So you could dunk. I could hit my head on the rim. You could dunk. Yes. Really, that's pretty awesome. I actually, I actually hit my head on the rim in games. No kidding. So you would dunk in games. Oh, you couldn't. When I was going, oh, yeah. it was illegal. That's right. You could. But dunk. I, I'd pick up games. They had a, a a league I played for one summer. Or one winner is called it. They call it semi pro league, and that you can do it at that time. So. Yeah, yep, that's that's awesome. But so I, it, <laughs> so I, mean, I I just like to do it. I just like to have, play. Oh know? yeah, yeah, that's that's really cool. All right, and uh, and how about music? Are you do you, do you have any uh, music you like? Any either bands or types of music you listen to? Uh, I'm not a fan of rap or hip hop. Yep, um, but I like um, standard. You know, rock and roll, the new stuff. I really like um, Celtic music. Oh, Celtic! Yeah, oh, like cool. you know, uh, uh, you know, like uh, oh gosh, um, but Red Hot Chili Pipers. You know, oh, the, oh, for the pipes. Oh, you know, and then some. Oh, really? There's 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 a, there's a group, the Red Hot Chili Pipers. Yep. So not not, and that's a, obviously a play on the the. You would think that might be a lawsuit going with the Chili Pipers. Yeah, you. But they they were here in Missoula a few years ago. I mean, they have like uh, three. Pipers and then the, the, you know the, the <laughs> drums cool. and everything. Out. I mean, they weren't just superb; they were funny. Yeah, that's great. And they had you know Scottish accent and nice. you know, people just crazy. And I mean, I like that type of music. And um, yeah, and it all depends. Yeah, maybe mellow, mellow one day, maybe really just going so you're actually dancing while you're blending shit. You know, oh, yeah, <laughs> or stuff. Yeah, yeah. So it's just it's a matter of. The, what I feel like that day. Awesome. Oh, uh, yeah. I'll see if I can find a link to a, uh, a video or something out there for the, for the Celtic stuff. All right, Doug. Well, that's about all I have for you in the next six to 12 months. Is there anything, um, new coming up for you or the business we can expect uh, to see out there? Just new products. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure exactly what yet, but we're have, we're looking at new playing on, on the board and, um, you know, and, and, and since this is our 20th year, Every month we're going to have a little special on a few things. Oh, cool! How do they? I, yeah, like I have legs. Next one month to be you know for a couple of weeks it'll be legs, and a, a little discount and for the for throughout throughout the year. Yep, so. yep, nice. Okay, good. Well, we'll keep an eye out there, and if they want to uh, connect with you, they could uh, just uh, go to flytiresdungeon.com is the best way if they have questions or want to connect. Yep, they can email me or call me either way. Okay, perfect. All right, Doug, well, I appreciate you coming on and sharing, uh, you know, all the information and, and some tips there on what you have going. It sounds like there's a wealth of, uh, you know, products and uh, things that can help people get going. So, um, so yeah, I'll look forward. I'm definitely going to hop over there and take another look and dig in there a little bit. So, yeah, thanks for coming on. Yep, not a problem. I appreciate it. Okay, see ya. Okay. So, there you go. If you want to find all the show notes with all the links we covered, just go to wetflyswing.com slash mad. Head over to the Member Society at wetflyswing.com slash members to go deeper with the podcast and the community. Find out how to connect with Fly Tires Dungeon at the Member Society. You can ask questions and get exclusive uh, discounts and uh, 
and, and for this situation, uh, up to 40% off all materials uh, here. So go to wetflyswing.com slash members to get started today. Thanks again for stopping by to check out the show. I'm looking forward to catching up with you soon and hope to maybe see you online or on the river. Thanks for listening to the Wet Fly Swing Fly Fishing Show. For notes and links from this episode, visit wetflyswing.com. And if you found this episode helpful, please subscribe and leave a review on iTunes.